Hello, everybody. How are you guys? Uh, Melanie and I wanted to talk to you about uh, our path to what we're doing now, which is Flying Giant Productions. It's a, a brand that we've created that produces web content for commercial use. So we're doing advertisement and uh, just branding pieces to give people kind of a feel of um, what your company does and get people excited about what's happening. From uh, that, though, we're also trying to spin, uh, give a social, have a social aspect as well. So from, we do the commercial branded content, but we also have kind of a social arm. So we're working with other nonprofits in the city um, and giving back to the community and using our media, uh, our media talents for that as well. Yeah. So uh, both of us started out in photography um, by different means, and I'll just kind of tell you a little bit about myself, and then Melanie can fill you in on her side. But uh, I went to college for photography in New Jersey, and um, the program that I was in was super old school and traditional, black and white, wet dark room. And um, when I graduated, I just wanted to travel, so I went into the Peace Corps, and it was a great uh, opportunity for me for a lot of reasons, but for the one that's most relevant probably is to shoot internationally and kind of get that experience of living and kind of understanding how to mix in with the, another culture and um, <clears throat> do all that. So I did that for two years. I photographed a ton while I was there. Um, and I'll show you a couple of pieces from that work here. So uh, the country that I was in, um, one of the major issues was alcoholism. It wasn't recognized there at all, um, but it was a huge issue, and uh, you could see it in every piece of the day-to-day -day life there, and this is just a... Where were you? Uh, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, it's called. It's in the <laughs> southeastern Caribbean. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so this is just kind of a selection of pieces from down there over the two years that I was there. Um, Kind of trying to look at what it was like to actually live there and not just what your average tourist sees um, when you visit or land on a cruise ship or anything like that. Strong rum is very popular there, <laughs> just in case you were wondering. Yeah. Uh, so then I came back uh, from that experience to the city and just tried to dig in and start working and um, figure out, you know, how I was going to make a living. And... Um, I started shooting this project on graffiti writers, and I i mean, you could probably tell from the last one that the portraits, I've always been interested in portraits, but I've also been really interested in getting to know the people that I'm photographing and try to understand who they are, what their story is, why they're doing what they're doing. So uh, the graffiti project is something that I was, the graffiti part of it I was always interested in, but this was a good excuse to kind of get to the people who were creating that work and um, get to know them and what motivated them. So this guy, uh, he writes the name Mears, and he was the guy who ran uh, that epically large graffiti building in Long Island City that maybe some of you have seen. It's called Five Points, yep. Just recently closed down. Uh, but I worked with him for six or eight months, and I got to know him really well. And um, he actually just called me this week out of the blue, which was really cool. It's great to kind of make those connections with people where... They become friends, and I don't know, it was a funny thing there. It definitely wasn't photojournalism. I was way too friendly with him for that. We would, I'd shoot with him all day, and then he'd be like, oh, what are you doing tonight? I'm going to my best friend's playing a concert. You want to come? Sure. So he came along and met all my friends and my family and all those kinds of things, but greatly uh, rewarding project working with him. He's a super guy. You should tell him about this weekend. So, oops, here's the next guy, Jesus Saves, so, or that's the name that he writes. Um, kind of a similar idea, just not focusing on them painting, but where they are and their lifestyle and the rest of their life. Um, he's actually a born-again Christian. He's a wild, wild guy. He had that kind of, like, crazy childhood, and uh, this was his way of snapping back out of it, but with limited success, I would say. Um, so anyway, that, uh, that was my personal work. And then um, 
at the same time, I started assisting a lot and learning how to shoot in the studio, learning how to light, learning how to tech, how to kind of do all the support roles in photography, and uh, eventually ended up on set with Melanie. So I'll let you kind of fill them in on where you... So my, a little bit about my background, I majored in journalism in college. So I was more of a writer than anything. Um, and I signed up to be in the Air Force after college. So I was a media relations officer for a good year before I ever actually was a photographer here in New York. Hi. <laughs> uh, um, so I had a lot of experience doing press releases and managing photographers. And I really love photography already, so I was kind of sneaking out when I could with a camera and going on the flight line, taking pictures. Um, I was a deputy editor of the newspaper, so I was like, well, I, I have the control here. I'll just take my camera and go try to do this stuff. So I, I had some newspaper experience, like documenting military life, which can be exciting and often wasn't. It was usually event stuff. Uh, so uh, when I moved to New York, I met Ryan almost right away. And like him, I was trying to piece together my work, doing commercial stuff, doing lighting, doing teching. And also on the side, I was doing a lot of uh, portraiture. Let me find it. Desktop. So this is a, a pair of comedians that I ran into along the way. Uh, they're called On the Pot. And we just did a bunch of random photos of them on the pot. And they, <laughs> it was a really fun project. Um, and this was their, they, they were doing the Fringe Festival in upstate New York. And that was their, their cover photo. This is another musician um, who I met through a music camp that I actually have been volunteering for here in the city. And we'll talk a little bit more about that camp and how we've been involved with them in doing a, a documentary, which has been really fun. Um, so I met these two women who are local musicians and did some portraits. Um, this is another, uh, it's like press photos for Dan Stevens for the Macmillan version of Ulysses. So just to, yeah, we, I don't know. This is our work to come together and form Flying Giant. We, we had that experience. Um, in lighting and in commercial world, in the commercial world, but we, we really saw a niche open up with video, I'd say. Um, I also had a real interest in travel, and I left New York for about six months because I can't sit still very long, <laughs> and uh, I went and backpacked around South America for six months, and this is a collection from that time. I wasn't funded or wasn't making any money really, but I started a travel blog called Wayward Winos. And from there, I, I really got into the social media aspect and was linked into other bigger travel agencies and found this job called Host Our Coast. Um, I applied to it. And eventually, Ryan and I did a second run of Host Our Coast and worked together. And that's what really kicked off our video career. So these are just some snaps from traveling around and having a good time. <laughs> so. so once we. Once we started, um, once we started dating, honestly, <laughs> shortly after we applied for uh, this competition, Host Our Coast, which was a travel blog uh, down in Delaware and Maryland on the seashore. It was hosted by uh, the uh, Chamber of Commerce and other kind of businesses in um, that area, and um, it was something that was. We, de we didn't know how to do it when we applied. <laughs> we had no idea, and that was part of the challenge. The application they wanted, uh, they wanted us to show that we knew how to shoot videos. So we have a very good friend, Andre Costantini, that a lot of you know. Um, he helped us kind of shoot and edit and showed us how to kind of get going with video. And it, uh, we ended up winning the competition. We went down there for three months and hosted this blog where we were out literally every day shooting events, interesting things to do, beautiful places to see, um, all these things. And this is this goofball uh, kind of spoof that we did on birders there because it's like a huge area for birding and we knew that going into it. So we kind of appealed to that. We were just kind of hamming it up on the camera. 
That's actually Andre. Also known as Leo the Birder. The Leo the Birder in this case, yeah. <laughs> so that, it, it ended up being a really amazing experience for us. We were able to produce a ton of content really, really quickly, and we kind of learned the ropes of how to shoot a project uh, and get back and edit it and have it on a website in the same day or by the next morning. Um, and it was in Delaware, so it was really a lovely training ground. It was, you know, there weren't that many followers. It was just like a great place. We were funded, we had this job, and it, was a, it wasn't New York, which was great, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. So when we came back from that experience to New York City, a lot of the photographers that we had been working with in those kind of support roles started asking us to shoot the video projects that their clients were asking them for. Um, which we, I, I don't think either of us expected that to happen. Um, and it was a great surprise. I mean, all of a sudden we kind of stepped into the role of uh, shooting more and being in more control and starting to have a say in the creative um, side of what was happening instead of always being the one that was just executing it. So, um, yeah, we were really excited about that. And we, we started, we have known uh, Cliff from Profoto for forever. I mean, really, he helped me kind of get my whole career started. And uh, he he's just a great guy. I don't know. It's actually, this, we met on a Profoto set <clears throat> eight years ago, um, working with Cliff and all those guys. Right. So we've known, that's the reason we actually met, which is strange enough. <laughs> yeah, so we've always gone... Whenever Cliff needs anything, I try to help him out with it, and he's the same way with me, and this is one of the projects that he was working on. He loves to do these, like, way too large, gigantic productions, like uh, this is doing the team shot of the New York Giants. So he just asked us to do a, a behind-the-scenes piece on it, showing the gear, showing the team, showing the space, um, and the whole thing. So that's what we did, and... Um, it just started a relationship with them. It showed them that we were interested in working with them and what we could do, and it turned into a much uh, bigger and better thing uh, uh, till now. I mean, we still, we're doing a ton of content for them, all their new product videos and um, all of their branding and things like that. We have some of that other stuff. <clears throat> we can show you guys. This is one of the most recent pieces we've worked on for them, which is a really fun project. I actually worked at the Seliger studio for a little while, which was kind of a funny round uh, coming back to this on a different, in a different level. So as we have uh, kind of grown with what we're doing, we spent more time doing it, we have uh, really pushed ourselves to refine our skills with video because there was that phase and I think it's still happening to some degree where all these photographers are starting to create video content and it is similar in a lot of ways but there's a lot of new uh, aspects of it that are really important and it adds a lot of production value if you can get a handle on those things and start adding them into your pieces and it we were super lucky with that initial thing where we had the time to kind of work out the major kinks and then, you know, then we started to like, okay, we need to add a little bit. It has to be a little smoother. It has to have more uh, bells and whistles to it. So we started, uh, you know, racking focus and getting smooth shots and picking up sliders and kind of, you know, working with some of the gear that was specifically for uh, video, which made a, a big difference as well. It kind of gave us a much more polished, much more professional look to what we were doing. Um, one of the, the biggest things I would say is learning to do audio. Uh, the visual aspect, and I always say this, it's somewhat familiar, but the audio is totally new. <laughs> so you have to kind of learn how it works and how to manipulate it in a way that um, it, it's effective. And it, it's amazing what how little you notice good sound, you only notice really crappy sound. So it, it's important to kind of jump that hurdle as quickly as you can and then start working on that, kind of refining it, refining it, and making it better. I think another piece of the transition from photography to video really came with Ryan and I realizing early on that it's definitely a team effort. Like, I think, you know, photography photographers a lot of times are lone wolves and like running around by themselves. and. I think early on we saw that you can't produce a good video by yourself and uh, 
we, we built a team besides us. Like if it's a really tiny project, we can just work on it ourselves, but we definitely hire friends, like sound people, extra production, and, and it really adds to the production, production value. Melanie and I have, have always, even on our own, before we were together, we uh, made a point of just trying to get our hands into anything that we possibly could, and it's it's like been really uh, rewarding in that way. We've met some really amazing people, and we've been in parts of much larger things, and um, you know, just kind of learn the different roles. And I think both of us are always trying to absorb what's happening and where it's happening and who's doing it, how it works. And um, it, it's helped us a lot in forming the business that we have now because we're able to kind of do different things and manage a lot of it ourselves. We're not completely relying on somebody else coming in and uh, always doing it for us. So this is a good example. I started messing around uh, with GoPros and doing stop motion and um, I just started noodling around with it and, and friends and co-workers knew I was doing it they were doing it too and I started getting called to do these larger stop motion jobs so this is coincidentally uh, another graffiti artist guy French guy JR uh, putting up this mural at the Greenwich Hotel. Yeah. Sorry. And this was a four-day project that turned into a 10-day project, so yeah. great for a, us. They were very awesome. ambitious. They thought they were going to get it done really quickly, and they had just decided they were going to start working by the rules of the city, which is that they could only have two people on this mm -hmm. lift, and they were accustomed to having four or five, and um, they just kept going. It took forever. <laughs> it's a really uh, hard work for those guys. Um, yeah, so just adding those kinds of different assets to your projects, I think it, it makes a big difference. And I also wanted to say, uh, you kind of touched on it before, but being a part of those bigger productions, you get to meet some of these other people that are fulfilling some of the other roles, like the editor or the sound or the production or the whatever, and you kind of forge relationships, or we've been able to do that with these people, and then when we have a need to have them come on to our set or we need somebody like them, we can go to those people and say, hey, can you come in? And we've made some really amazing connections um, doing that and people that, uh, you know, you just keep growing the network. I think that's probably pretty familiar to everybody. I just, our guy that we found from working on another set that does our sound or does the sound on the bigger projects, I just gave his name to somebody else today and then he passes it on and just keeps going out and out, which is really nice because eventually that circle comes back to you and it's, it's very rewarding. That last video of uh, Moda Operandi, of the, the model on the bike, that's a perfect example of a network and how we grew our business. Like Thus far, everything has been through relationships and through friends and friends of friends and being in the city. And I was a digital tech for that company like last year. And they were like, wait, what else do you do? And I was like, oh, we do video. And we're working for them on video now. And it's really amazing like they're a great company and it's super fun like flirty so this is another project that Rye worked on with doing stop motion yeah it was a huge installation for the financial times in uh, Vanderbilt Hall in Grand Central Terminal uh, they just they had a launch of a new series or I don't even really remember what it was to be honest but they took over the whole thing and they wanted it documented and it was a fun project. I mean, it, it's hard to get into those spaces otherwise. And I think that everybody that's shooting really, I think all of us like that. It's like you get to go places where other people don't get to go. That's what the gentleman before us was saying. Having the access to go into those places can be really neat. And you, I met the guy who's the uh, building manager, and he's like, oh, you think that's cool? Come with me. And he took me all up into the back of the building, which is so fun. You know, it's, it's really... Uh, it's really interesting. <clears throat> Speaking of getting to go places, we just went to Sundance with Victoria Will, and uh, that was freaking amazing. <laughs> it was like super fun. We're actually finishing up the project, the bigger piece. Uh, we got to sit in her studio for a whole week and photograph behind the scenes of her wet plate project, which has really taken off and been a huge success for Victoria. Um, it was so much fun, as you can probably imagine. Um, so we, yeah, we've been lucky to meet people and they like what we're doing. Uh, that was a clip from this, uh, the dark room that they built in the, in the space. And um, we were using the Canon C100 and it was really cool to be able to see its ability or capability. And we took it in the dark room and it filmed beautifully. 
which is really nice. Yeah. Uh, a couple other things we want to touch on. Uh, we're always watching content, just constantly. We're looking at YouTube, we're looking at Vimeo, we're looking at Devour, we're looking, we're following these blogs and kind of trying to see who's doing what and try to be in the mix. I consider it my homework. It's like just, it's fun. You know, you kind of see how folks are doing things and what they're doing and who they're working with. And it kind of it gives us ideas that we can kind of jump off on and... Um, it's super fun, so you know I'm sure most folks are doing that already anyway. But if you're not, do it or keep doing it. <laughs> uh, the social media presence for us is really important. Also, I mean, I, I don't think I can say it any better than he said it. Um, but it, it, I always discount. I never think like, oh, this nobody's looking at this. But then invariably, we'll put something up where we're on a job, and a week later or a month later, somebody will say, oh, you were doing such and such, and it's like, oh my gosh, that stuff. It, the the value of it is just immeasurable it's free marketing and it's fun i mean it, if you can do it in that way where i don't know i have my own personal one and then we started one for the business flying giant at flying giant and it to me it's so much more fun to do it for the business because it, it kind of gives us we can dip into our personal lives and our professional lives and kind of a little bit of both and give everybody a feel of exactly what we're doing and where we're going Another fun uh, way we've been working with new clients lately is uh, startups. We've really tapped into that market. And this is a prime example, City Bird. Um, I started going into tech meetups, and I met these two ladies uh, who are starting an online wedding registry for experiences in New York, and they hope to expand to other cities around the country. So we collaborated with them on a very low budget, but just it's really cool work to like explore what they need and what you know how to develop their idea as well. Uh, we had a lot of fun working with them for a Kickstarter campaign. So we do stuff like this as well. And, um. Kickstarter is huge. They, everybody needs a video. And the videos are getting better and better. They're really amazing, some of them. Um, and another thing I, that's happening for us now, too, is uh, e-commerce, where folks are on set shooting you know, 40 shots in a day to throw up on a brand's website. Now they're starting to do uh, video content for those as well. So video has all these new outlets they just seem to be like stacking up one on top of each other I, we're just having a very good experience with that and I, I would encourage anybody to kind of keep heading down that road if you're not already and try to see if you can um you know get some of that work it's really nice are there any questions <laughs> i feel like we're talking a lot <laughs> yes so how did you you know your move from being tech video um, how did you figure out the uh, invoicing and what to charge and all that good stuff I think it's tr sure um, the question is how from starting with being a tech and a lighting assistant and photographers how did you move into billing for a video situation I mean a lot of it was trial and error it was asking other friends um, also trying to meet other filmmakers that are actually in the industry because we're friends with mostly photographers so they're having the same issue so it's kind of trial and error and like seeing what the market would bear and charge one thing or like next time, oh, that was a little too easy. Or they were like, yeah, they grabbed it too quickly. So the next time was like, well, let's just aim for three times as much just to have a negotiating room. And when they'd say yes, you're like, okay, well, let's, you know, just kind of feeling it out that way. But a lot of it was really just feeling it out along the way. Still. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I mean, neither one of us have a ton of experience in that realm, you know, in the business part so it's yeah we we actually uh, there's one person that's been really pivotal for us his name is brian chang he runs his own production company called meerkat media super nice guy very very talented and uh, he was teaching some kind of uh, editing workshop yeah. that a friend of ours ended up attending and then she ended up teaching uh basically like a workshop for multimedia at NYU for grad students in the editorial program. And she brought Brian back and ended up bringing us in as well to help her teach that class. And he has the benefit of that. That's exactly what he's doing. It's just film, just video. He's doing feature length documentaries. They do commercial projects. They're doing all the kind of stuff that we're doing, but with a lot more experience. And um, he's been super helpful. And I think it, I don't know. I remember that starting out and assisting, 
it's, I didn't know how much to charge. You just kind of had to find people, and you make some mistakes. And I think we've we've certainly done that. You know, we've walked in a lot of uh, potholes, but we've we figured it out. So. And this this past year, after forming our LLC together as Flying Giant Productions, Ryan and I have worked separately in the industry for quite a quite a while. But we've been a, an actual company as Flying Giant Productions for just over a year. We really put our energy into looking at the, the city resources, like small business solutions, which I can't recommend enough. Like they have free classes all over the city, like QuickBooks, how to financial plan, like how to uh, project, like all these things, how to get organized, how to maintain your receipts. So I really, like I was the one doing most of that, like really, really focusing on how to get organized and how to be more professional in that sense. So we can demand the money, <laughs> I guess, ultimately. And it's not like we're we're trying to gouge anybody. No. We weren't charging enough. <laughs> you know, we're like, huh, how come everybody live. else is making this work except for us? Anybody else? Yeah. Is there is there anything that hasn't worked out or any like challenges that y'all have run into? Because it sounds like things have been going pretty well. Oh, of course there are challenges. Like, <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> yeah, tons. Good. I I don't know. I just feel like the billing thing and and presenting like meeting new clients that are outside of our circle that's like a new thing it's like well how do we go about this agency access do we start hounding other friends like here let's have a dinner party you know we're just we're kind of in that realm right now it's like it would be nice to reach outside and expand our client base um so that's a challenge yeah and on, on the technical level i think we've stepped in every hole there is to step in it's like we've been out on shoots without batteries we have you know there's so much more gear in video button, it's uh, like oh, how do you pack your bag you know I mean, but it, it just takes that's why i always say we were so lucky to have that thing in the very beginning where we knew we were there for the long haul and nothing was happening that was like so so pivotal and we were able to kind of fix it if there was a major problem which is great so yeah and because of that job i'd say we we both got really really good at solving our problems through youtube so if we ever had a question really in true. editing or, you know, QuickBooks, and like, how do you reconcile, or whatever. I, we just Google it, and like, YouTube saves the day once again. Literally, like, so often. Learning to edit, especially. We I learned how that. to edit off of YouTube. Well, that's <laughs> not like... entirely true, but we learned a lot off of YouTube. <laughs> Let's yeah. be real, yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Can we get sound on this for a sec? Can we do that? Oh, well, we wanted to show you one more thing. Oh, you could. This it's... is a, a project that. We were talking about giving back to the community, and like that's very important to both of us. Um, so I started, about two years ago, I started working with this group called the Willie Mae Rock Camp. I went to photograph them, actually, and I was so in love with it. I was like, wait, this is so much more than a photo project. So I, did my audio die? Can you hear me? No. Huh? Yeah, no? we can hear you. Oh, you can. Oh, sorry. Um, so I was in love with them and I, I thought it was much more than a photo project. So I went back and I asked the executive director if I could start filming the camp just to, to show like what happens there and like how it's so empowering to young girls. And the camp itself is teaching rock instruments, like rock and roll instruments to girls from ages eight to 18. Um, and Rai was very much on board. So he helped me start shooting this thing and we shot it. So this is like the first teaser from the project we've been working on. Um, just about two months ago we did a series of 30 interviews with campers and parents and executives and volunteers that teach. And it's, it's really like a special project to me especially. So I wanted to show you guys. Steve, can you turn off the vocals, please? <laughs> it's really I feel like I was born to music. I'll probably die to music. Morning, day, night, music is everywhere. There's so many ways that we find to express ourselves, and so the music is one of the most powerful, not just on our own, but in the groups that matter to us and figure out who we are and what we love. Not only can you express yourself, but I feel like you can express anything. When I need to release my thoughts, I listen to music. And it has like helped me shape myself into a confident person. And I think it's very important for youth to be able to fully self-express, and music is just another tool to get that done. When I need to express my thoughts, then I play music, so either way I can use music to express myself. Please give it up for our harsh crowd! Uh, 
up in Canada. They can take down and still playing around the city. I think it's always important for girls and women to have a forum um, where we can be the um, the decision makers and the creative forces and the people taking the creative risks and trying out new things and also supporting each other in that process as opposed to competing next to each, against each other or being in a framework where we're being encouraged to compete against each other instead of work together. Rock camp is a really important experience. I feel like even if you've never tried playing an instrument, I feel like it's worth it because it's not just about the music, it's also about the community and uh, empowerment, which is also very important. <laughs> there's nothing like rock camp. Like I've been to many places, but there's no place like rock camp that can do something like that to you and can teach you all the lessons that rock camp teaches you. I think it's important for girls to come together in this sort of environment because it shows girls that no matter what anybody else says, you can do whatever you want. In the wider world, it, there's so often a culture of like, oh, you want to play music? Um, great, we need another backup vocalist. But like the terms of the game have already been set sometimes. And so I, I think the takeaway that like, if that's what the game is and it's not working for you, make your own game. And at Rock Camp, that's what we've done. We've like made our own place. feeling of yeah I can do this and 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 how that applies to anything that they do whether that's music or not because I really do think it transfers over and helping more and more people understand that it's not about like cuteness it's not about how that's cool or cute it's actually something quite deeper than that all of them that are on our website. The only one that we didn't edit was the uh, the Financial Times one, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. All the others we edited. That's been part of our kind of business structure, too. We found that uh, with people asking photographers to shoot video, they don't want 10 people to show up or have all these other costs involved. And it's not to say that we don't charge for editing. We definitely do. But there's a kind of security in saying, we're going to take your workflow from your concept until a finished edit, and we can do that. So if we need extra hands, we bring them in, but we make sure we can handle the whole thing from beginning to end. Yeah, that was kind of my second question. Like, what about um, any mixing or color correct, or are you, are you that's Yep, we're doing it. We're handling the whole uh, post-production flow. Yeah. Anything else, you guys? Cool. Thanks. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks for having us.